Just keep your eyes closed, please. Let to one's own self. As you close your eyes, so many different types of thoughts shall pass through. You see for yourself how many of those thoughts remind you of yourself and how many of those thoughts remind you the external world. Most of the people, most of the time shall have thoughts that remind them about the external call it creation, universe, world, whichever you like. Since nobody, not many are aware of themselves. They helplessly move with the thought to the outside world that is where. Consciously you initiate a thought which reminds you of yourself. Even though you are aware who you are is not the product of a thought. No name produces an object, yet a name reminds a thought reminds. So any thought, any idea, you consciously initiate. Like we saw yesterday, ninda tulyas, ninda stuti tulya mauni, santushta ena kena chit. Anigeda sthiramatihi bhaktiman me priyonara. One who enjoys this disposition. Tulya ninda stuti. A person who is one with himself, total equanimity, ninda stuti. Some people praise, some other people censure. A person remains above board, unaffected. Not because what the other people are saying is right or wrong, but is absolutely sure of himself. Who I am, Drudhanishaya, unshakable awareness of yourself. 
and you remain rooted, established, settled in yourself. No force in the world can touch you. As they say, the dog barking at the moon, the moon continues to shine. When somebody sings your praise, you don't drag it to yourself, nor do you drag the censures. If unconsciously you feel flattered, if unconsciously you feel excited, or somebody's compliment, you shall be devastated. And a person withdraws the compliment. Who you are is not dependent upon what other people say about you. your estimation of yourself. So ask yourself the question, initiate this thought as you sit down. Drudhanishchaya, absolutely confident of myself as I am. Therefore, people's Praise or censure, appreciation or criticism makes no difference. Mauni, always quiet, vak samyata vak, or no unnecessary speech. Please appreciate. When you don't talk unnecessarily, your mind too slows down. It doesn't think anymore unnecessarily. Because it becomes aware all these thoughts are not used. to join somebody in speaking. Statement to statement, word by word to word, then conversation shall go on for a long time. When you keep quiet, however insensitive the other person is, he slowly gets the message and tapers off cuts off. When you are sitting down by yourself, your conversation goes on inside you. That is why sometimes you shall see people talking to themselves. Extreme classes of restlessness. To stop talking. mind too slows down. You are conscious. And such a person Santushta ena kena chit. Whatever comes on the way, ena kena chit. Yadruchalava santushta. Whatever comes on the way, whatever may be the circumstances in life, santushta, contented. It 
discontented rich man is very poor. A contented poor man is very rich. Whom you call poor is one who has wants of many kinds. One who doesn't have want of any kind, if nothing he wants, lacks. The richest man in life. If you sit down under a tree, but you revel in the universe totality, Ishwara, Santushta, Anikeda, no home, no structure can contain him, Alparvesi, yourself. Tasmat sthiramadihi. Absolutely steady, settled, no anxiety. Sukha, dukha, bhaya, udvegir mukta, free from exhilaration, excitement, depression, anxiety, fear. Sthiramadi. Being yourself. Such a person, Bhagavan says, Ativa me priya, very dear to me. person who has absolutely no demand naturally is sought after by all. Absolutely contented. You are at rest with yourself. Body, mind, Ishwar alone is. Just see that for yourself.
shall start our 13th chapter today. When you thus see yourself very clearly, please understand the books, all the verses become very clear for you. It's first you see it yourself, please understand. Then you are introduced to that. As I told you long back in your class, experience is always ahead of information. Understand? It's a very responsible statement, subtle statement, because your mind will immediately jump with an argument. How can you say so experience is ahead of information? My first time hearing of Himalayas, but I have not experienced it. Understand. There seems to be a little truth in it, but please appreciate. This information you have got true. But this information, understand, ahead of both knowledge as well as experience. Listen carefully. It's a very subtle statement. Information is always ahead of knowledge and experience. Between the two, if you look at it, experience is always ahead of the knowledge. You can take that statement. You have heard the Ideas about Himalayas. Then one day you go there. Already you are seeing it. Then somebody shall point out. This is, understand, before somebody points out, this is Himalayas, listen carefully. Before somebody points out, this is Himalayas, you are already seeing it. Or else you can't say this. You are already experiencing it. Then you say, oh, what is that oh? Now you are connecting what you have heard and what you are seeing. When you connect up what you heard, the name, and what you see, the object, it becomes knowledge. So previously when you heard Himalayas, it's just an information. Because it did not project any picture, no association. Now first you experience it. Then when somebody points out this is Himalayas, now that information becomes a knowledge. Because now that information which is empty filled with the object. Information is something which does not remind you the picture. Listen carefully. Same way, information on self can come long before you know what it is. Atma, Brahma, Chetana, Ganges. Like child, you are repeating. You are ch ch chanting Sri Suktam, Purusha Suktam, Narayana Suktam, Vedas, you are chanting, means nothing to you. Information. When you are exposed to the teaching, 
This is your first as you sit down. They point out, what are they doing it? They are associating this information to yourself. Now we shall have so many words like that. Beautifully you will see now. And when you are associating that word with the object, already you are experiencing the body. They say, this is body. How do you introduce a child to any word? Nose, eyes. First he seen the object or first he hears the name? You are already experiencing your body. Now a name is given for communication. But because of the name, the body is not being created. Stomach, mouth, ear, the child picks up. Mm, I see. So what comes first? Between the experience and knowledge, experience comes first. Knowledge is associating information with the object. So beautiful. Do you understand? So if you want to have the knowledge of yourself, what you are really wanting to do is associating yourself, the object, with another information. Experience of yourself is already existing. You are who you are, whether you know or don't know. Even if you don't know, the nose is yours. I know the name of a particular part of your body. Does it disappear? Same thing about your mind, your emotions, about yourself, about anything in this universe. Because you don't know the name, that does not mean the things disappear. Then we experience, what is this? We want to give it a name. Until you give it a name, listen carefully, how peculiar it is. Until you give it a name, even though you have experienced it, you are ignorant of it. How peculiar. You understand? How peculiar it is. Even though you have experienced it, you are ignorant. You meet a person. Then I say, did you see Raman? No. At breakfast time you are talking, the person right side by your side, right side, he was talking, you are talking with that man. Yes, he is Raman. Oh, now what is the oh? Are you kidding that point? You experience the person, but still you don't know. But you cannot say, I know and I don't experience. Listen. This is the vagueness of the modern studies. You know, modern studies means people don't take it. Like say, oh, I know Taj Mahal, but I don't have experience it. If I have not experienced it, it's not knowledge. It's in, it is information. You know Taj Mahal? Yes. Yes, but you have not experienced it. Then it's not knowledge yet. It is only information. Any day you go and stand in front of it, suppose you have never seen the picture, you have never seen the picture, but you are going to, going in Agra, you are driving. Then you have heard about Taj Mahal, because in your book you have written, you have history, you have read. Then as you are going, you look, oh, lovely structure. Then the driver says, is this Taj Mahal? Oh, uh -uh, that's what it is. Oh, the oh is knowledge. And it comes after experience. You first you experience. Are you getting that? You must see it clearly because this is one huge thing in the religion, in spiritual field of spirituality. Oh, I don't have the experience. Don't say that. Everybody has the experience of the self. God is the easiest thing to experience. Why? God is self. And now we shall see that. That's why I'm going into it. Most, the mostest, if I can use that word, huh? <laughs> mostest, easiestest thing is God and self. 
other things very difficult because to see something you need a eyes ears tongue taste all these things you to be yourself is not a sound to be heard asabdam asparsham arupam arasamagandham not a sound to be heard not a form to be seen not a touch to be touched not a smell to be smelt not a taste to be tasted is it his glory or weakness is glory why lucky even if sense organs are not there you don't miss yourself or else blind man cannot be aware of himself deaf cannot be aware of himself so easy and that ahamatma sarvabhuta says the vishad the same truth is here so this knowledge is very simple is yes, you can say for the easy understanding the information comes first before the experience but at no time knowledge comes before experience because knowledge means associating the information with the object and the long before you associate with the experience listen carefully are you getting the subtlety long before you associate that information with the object first you see the experience the object then only association is possible or else how will associate suppose you never see high viscous think you you have picked up the information high viscous high viscous high viscous but until you see the high viscous how will you associate are you getting that point experience has to come first or else you cannot associate name with the object are you getting that point to associate you must first experience the object experience means either see it or hear it i talked about brown crow brown crow you know brown crow yes then you hear the noise from this o o i is the brown o oh, what is the o oh. you heard the sound then you like an associate with the name of the bird if there is no sound of the bird how do i associate with the name or another thing is first did you hear this sound yes what is this brown crow first time you pick up a name but first you experience that is why this knowledge is so easy other things object to be experienced sense organs are needed you must be new with the object go there difficulty to hear a sound suppose you want to introduce your child to thunder wait for the rainy season like this madras now this is like december yes sky january sky now do you introduce a child to the thunder huh rain is supposed to come wait if for a sound for a form you have to wait for a touch you have to wait for a taste you have to wait for a smell you have to wait but to be yourself what waiting neither in time nor in space at all times all places therefore this is the easiest thing now we have seen both in the twam twam pada and the bhagavad gita as it told 18 chapters first six chapter talk about twam pada who you are ending in meditation sixth chapter seventh to 11th talks about ishwara ending up in vishwarupa darshan so beautiful and 12th bhakti natural comedy was now the identity asi 13th to 18th the identity of both will be explained very clearly where you understand yourself so that you revel in yourself more and more getting the knowledge beautiful but as you must see yes to kriyavan sapandita when the knowledge is expressed in action 
then only it is beautiful. Talking about kindness is no good unless it is shown in action. Talking about strength is no good unless you have the strength at your disposal. Talking about food is no good unless you eat it and quench and satisfy your hunger. Same thing. So now we'll see this. As you read it, we shall, I'll explain to you. The one verse is missing in this book, Arjuna Vacha, the first one. Is it there in that book? No book, huh? Okay, Arjuna Vacha. Prakrutim cha purusam cha Kshetra kshetra gyame vache Etad veditum ichami Gyanam gyam cha keshava Arjuna vache Prakrutim che purusham che Kshetra kshetra gyame vache Etad gyantu mimich Etad gyantu mimich Etad gyantu mimichami Okay Gyanam gyam cha keshava That is the verse when the Bhagavan says. Now read the answer also. It is very simple. Shri Bhagavan uvacha. Now go to the book. Idam sariram kaunteya Kshetramitya vidhiyate Etad yo vetitam prahu Kshetragyam iti tad vida Kshetragyam chapi maam vidhi Sarvakshetre shubharate Kshetra Kshetra Gnya Yor Gyanam Yattad Gyanam Matam Mama Shri Bhagavan Vacha Idam Shariram Kaunteya Kshetra Mitya Vidhiyate Etad yo vettitam prahu Kshetra gnya iti tad vida Kshetra gnya mcha api maam vidhi Sarva kshetre shu bharata Kshetra kshetra gnya yor gyanam Yattad gyanam matam mama The thirteen chapter can begin with a question, without a question also, it doesn't matter, you can, you know, hey, interpretation is like that. Arjuna need not ask a question also, why? After the Vishwarupa is so stunned, what question can he ask? Are you getting that? In fact, if you remove that question, it is better. You are not necessary. But Bhagavan knows what he wants. Please know. That is why the total picture is so much needed. Average ordinary person can never have the total picture in the beginning stages. A student, a person who is ignorant, can never have the total picture. It's just like a child. The child is interested only in his toy. When the parents are preparing for the whole trip, child is worried about what? My doll is there or not? 
my water bottle, the small one, eh? with 100 grams of water. The child usual. The, that bottle is there, that, that means trip is ready. The child will not understand. There has to be a tent, there has to be a campsite, there has to be food, there has to be light, there has to be majestic. Hundreds of different things, the car, the petrol, all these things. But the child is worried about what? My doll. My doggy? Oh, my doggy. Very important. Or else, for the child, the trip is not complete. The child will not ask, have you taken the matchbox? <laughs> Did you take the stove? It doesn't exist, the child's mind. Our as individual living in this world, nobody exists except me. My house, my car, my food, me. Only if you live with a family, my father, my mother, my husband, my child, my wife, my things. All right, me. Even in the family also, me. What I get, so important. <laughs> what happens to the whole creation makes no difference to anybody. Understand? But until you get the total picture, you cannot really grasp everything as it is. Like suppose somebody says, oh, my stomach, <coughs> my stomach is so big. Just think of an answer, a question. Oh, I'm so, you know, overweight. When somebody tells you, you go to a doctor, maybe a doctor asks you a question. Change the uh, manure in your paddy field. You start wondering, what nonsense he is talking? I am talking about my health. And he is talking about the manure in the paddy field. What is the connection? Are you getting that? What is the connection? The connection is, the problem begins with that. Your food product is produced by useless, genetically modified stuff. Chemical manures. When that food stuff goes into your stomach, then it becomes like a toxic, poisonous. Your system goes crazy and you are sick. So you are talking about your sickness, but he is talking about the manure, which you don't understand. Why is he talking about manure? Or take care of your cow. So he is not taking care of manure, he is take care of your cow. What is he taking care of the cow? Don't feed the cow anything other than the bioproduct, that is grass, leaves. Don't give him these artificial things, chemical uh, uh, vitamins and other things, then the milk is bad. The cow dung also is polluted. So you want to say, I am sick, take care of your cow. What statement is that? That is what life is. Complete picture. That is why even if your toe is bad, it takes a body scan. Why? Anywhere. Why the, you say, why my toe is not healing? Do you eat sweet? Now, what question? Average person doesn't understand. I am asking about my toe. What are you asking about whether I am eating sweet or not? You naturally ask, what has got to do with my eating sweet? This is what it is. Are you angry? Frustrated? Afraid? Frightened? Oh, I'm so frightened, so... Nah, 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 nah. Do you know about yourself? What has got to do with this? <laughs> that has got everything to do with it. 
Are you getting that point, please? Going to the source of the problem. And once you go into the source of yourself, then what happens? The whole picture, where do I stand in relation to the whole creation? Understand? Anywhere, friends, you can't just know the road from here to temple. So many. If you have the Teruvannamalai map, you know the ashram, you know everything. Then you can connect in so many different ways. Just not one road. To connect yourself to another person, a man or woman, facing a situation, you must know everything about your body, everything about your perception, everything about your thoughts, everything about I thought, everything about yourself, the whole creation, the other person's body, other person's mind, other person's everything, then only you can take a right decision. Or else how can you take any right decision? Think. Without having the map at your disposal, how do you know which road is the best road to the destination? You want to go there? Yes. What is the best road? Where is the map? Where is the map? What is the best way of being happy? Where is the map? Your mind map. Your body map. The whole creation map must be at your disposal. Understand? Please. This entire destination will be talked about now. The whole destination, everything. Bhagavan has initiated this subject in seventh chapter. What is beautiful, he says, you know, how beautiful Bhagavan says, you know, E Arjuna, Bhumi rapo nalo vayu khammano buddhireva che ahankara itiyam me vinna prakruti rashtada aparayam itastvanya vidhime prakruti impara. One line complete is so beautiful. Bhumi rapo nalo vayu khammano buddhireva cha ahankara itiyam me vinna prakruti rashtada. Five, five elements. Mano buddhi ahankara. Three, eight. Vinna prakruti rashtada. This is my eight different prakrutis. Yam apara. This is apara prakruti. The total space, total air, total fire, total water, total earth. The entire gross universe is taken care. The total mind, total intelligence, total ahankar. The whole subtle one is taken care of. Itas, this is apara prakruti. This is my apara prakruti. This is relative dimension. Itastu anyam, whatever is other than this. Five elements gone, mano, buddhi, ahankara gone. What else is left out? Yourself. Vidhi me prakruti imparam. Hey Arjuna, that is my para prakruti. Where is that existing? Jiva bhutam. It is existing in every person. Yaya by which? Idam jagat dharyate. The whole elemental universe, subtle universe is sustained. Complete picture. Does it make any sense to you? After all that, you know, the Vishwarupa and everything. Now that, apara prakriti, para prakriti, what he has told, now that complete picture, where you see your identity. Why? In a total picture, you are never left out. If you are left out, the picture is not complete. So you see that totality. You understand the, this is empowerment. What you thought is an isolated little body is part of a total elemental universe. What you call a tiny little thought is part of the macrocosmic mind. Consciousness, yourself, everywhere. What a dimension. When all our secular studies 
introduces us to limited identity, sometimes condemns us to limited identity. In the study of the self, the absolute, you are released into infinity. You can't escape being infinity. What a, what a contrast. What teaching shall we give to the people? Shall you make them a slave of a God? Huh. Slave of a belief system? Slave of an idea? Or the master of this universe? Helping him to understand himself who he is. God alone is existing. But that God is not my boss. He alone is. What he says? Ativa me priya. He says, Ativa me dasa. Huh? Did he say? Ativa me priya. My darling, my dear. My dearest one. Ativa priya. Oof, oof, oof. You understand the language? To be loved by God, you must be lovable. How? Be yourself. Everything is taken care. You demand. You remain the beggar. God doesn't hate you, but you remain the beggar. Understand? Are you getting that point? The more you demand, more your self-esteem goes away. Are you getting that? More you demand, anybody, you suppose you, you demand money from somebody, having begged for a money from, as a favor, can you show off your strength to that fellow? The moment you beg a favor, you are putting yourself down. That is why Vishnu, God himself, when he went to ask three feet land from Vali, the king took the shape of dwarf. Why? Symbol. Anybody demanding, begging, becomes smaller, grows small in stature. Only one person has the right to beg. Who? A sannyasi. Sannyasi means what? A wise man. Having fulfilled in himself. When he begs, it's not for his sake, not for personal satisfaction. Sarvaram bhavarityagi. If he asks, it's for others. You have full right to ask. That is why when you beg for others, you don't feel uncomfortable. When you beg for yourself, you feel... You feel rotten. That is why people while eating, they take care. In Uriya, there is a nice verse. Lobhi bhunje jatha samarjada jagi kahe prativesi patre deva lagi. Every language it will be there. In Tamil also it will be there. If I say, you will tell, you will remember your Tamil. It, because it is there in the culture. That greedy person always eats by telling, give him some ladu. <laughs> then, when the ladu comes there, one here, quietly. But loudly, give him ladu. Oh, he wants ladu, you know. So everybody knows how you are really caring for the other person. <laughs> give him the ladu. Oh, see how he takes care of the neighbor. And when the ladu comes here, one here. Because the greedy person doesn't want to reveal himself that he wants it. <laughs> Understand? Please. So whenever you ask, naturally, good. But when you ask for others, it makes no difference. So Bhagavan says what? Atiba me priya. But in ignorance, there is a fear. Big brother watching. God means big brother watching. Oh, yo, I don't know what to do. That's why people are destroyed in the so-called faith and all that. Anyway, now, full picture is given. Arjuna need not ask that question. Bhagavan himself can introduce the vast theme. But anyway, to make it easier for people, Arjuna asked this question, Oh Lord, please tell me, what are these things I have heard of? Prakrutim cha purusham cha. You told about two prakruti, para prakruti, apara prakruti. What is this Prakruti Purusha they talk about? Kshetra Kshetra Gya. What is Kshetra? What is Kshetra Gya? 
Etat bedi tu miccha mi. See that I wait etat gyan tu miccha mi. It is not falling coming in the the meter is not complete. Any etat bedi tu miccha mi. I want to know gyanam che gyanam che kesa. What is gyanam? What is gyanam? What is knowledge? What is to be known? All these things, O Lord, I know. Okay. How much? Can you explain a question without explaining the answer? So what is there to explain a question? This is what the first verse over, okay? The second one. <laughs> How do you explain a question? Explaining a question means answer, no? <laughs> so the answer, no, Bhagavan says. Beautiful answer. Please revel. Now there is nothing to reveal. Because you have heard about yourself. You have seen what Ishwara is. There is nothing more to talk. Now, revelry, revelry, revelry. Just put yourself there. Am I like this? Oh. There is nothing more to know. After the whole picture, then what? <laughs> reminds me. <laughs> Upanishad is so cute. I'm telling you now, advance. But when that Upanishad comes again, laugh, eh? <laughs> <laughs> in a, in a Kanopanishad, the teacher teaches the whole thing from top to bottom. <laughs> the teacher the teacher teaches the whole thing. After everything the fellow hears, the student asks the question. So now the student says, oh, do you have any question? He said, yes. Upanishad, please teach me Upanishad. <laughs> Now, how do you like it? It's like in a person listens to the whole Ramayana. Whole Ramayana he reaches, reads, listens. And then the Kathakar asks the question. Kisko koi sawal hai kya? Does anybody have any question? He said, yes. Yes, I have a question to ask. What is that? In Ramayana, who is the Rakshas? <laughs> Rama or Ravana? Who is the bad boy? Who is the bad guy? Who is the demon? So the Rama is the Rakshas or Ravana is the Rakshas? Then the Kathagar gives a beautiful answer. He says, Ram kyu Rakshas hoga? Why should Ram be Rakshas? Why should Ram be bad boy? Because he is the son of Dasaratha, himself an incarnation. Ravana kyu Rakshas hoga? Why should Ravana be Rakshas? We are the son of Bishrava, the great Rishi, and himself, a learned scholar. Main jo rakshasu, tumhare jaisa bekum ko pade. As he says, the teacher says, why Rama should be rakshas? Bad boy, because he's son of the Asrath himself, he's our incarnation. Why Ravan should be rakshas? Because Ravan is the son of the great sage and himself learned scholar. I am the one who is the great rakshas because I am teaching an idiot like you. I am the biggest rakshas that I am teaching you like you. Okay. Can you there is, after listening to the whole Upanishad, the fellow says, what Upanishad Bhavrui? After this, the whole picture of I and Ishwara, after that, what is there to learn? Is there anything to reveal? Understand, nothing to reveal anymore. Now is the time to revel. So from 13th chapter onwards, just fit in, fit in, fit in, fit in, fit in. Make your life so beautiful. Fitting in and living that life. Happy, contented. Mm. So much so you should make the misery just a sample in the laboratory. Like they have made, no, the uh, smallpox. The smallpox germ, the smallpox is wiped out from the world now. Previously, all this, uh, you know, pockmarked faces, one eye is gone, you know, oh boy, what all things the smallpox was doing? Creating havoc in the world. But the smallpox is completely eradicated from the whole world. That is where man's faith in God also eradicated. Why that type of God? What type of God? God for whom small, 
He was sending a scourge called smallpox. Now we have defeated the smallpox, therefore God is defeated and God is dead. Naturally, understand the solid logic behind it. So people don't care anymore, but that doesn't solve the problem because they don't know themselves and therefore God. It's a different issue, different God, different self. Anyway, that you have seen already. So as even you have made this smallpox, now a little sample in a test tube in research laboratories, exclusive research laboratories of the world, why a species should not be extinct, let it be there. You don't know, sometimes it may be very useful, who knows, who knows. So, unhappiness, make it a sample <laughs> and keep it somewhere in your body. Why? If you completely forget, how will you deal with unhappiness of other people? I'm a very happy man. I will not understand the unhappiness of people. It's like a rich man forgets poverty. Forgets poverty. It's very rich. Billionaire. Private jet, private yard, private landing, private wilderness. He doesn't understand there's a traffic jam. He has a helicopter. He doesn't understand the time delay. Personal jet. Doesn't understand there is lack of food. We have thousands of things are available everywhere. The person lives like that. Forgets, forgets poverty. Like Mary Antoinette, the French queen, when he was asked, there is such a famine in France. He says, "What do they not do? They don't. They do they not get even cake? Even cake. That means cake is the easy, I mean, the smallest, I mean, the simplest thing you can ever have. So cake also they don't get. <laughs> Alauddin Kilji." They say, was asked, today in the kingdom there is famine. Biryani bhi nahi milta. People are not giving, getting even biryani. That is the list he can have. That is the richest man, rich man's list. Forget. Because there is lifestyle. Always revel in yourself. Happy, happy, contented. Then anybody comes and says, hey, hey, what are you talking? No. Keep little sample of unhappiness with you. Just a sample. A sample is under control. Never let loose. Understand? Like the <coughs> smallpox job. Keep it as a sample, but never let loose. You keep a sample of unhappiness with yourself. Why? So you can understand the language of unhappiness. So beautiful. But happy with yourself, content with yourself. Why? Because you are your strength. God is your strength. Call it belief in God, which is self. Belief in self. Know yourself. That is belief in self. Atma gyan. Atma lavharna param vidyate. There is nothing greater than awareness of yourself. And that is the awareness of God in you. As Bhagavan says, aham atma sarvabhuta I am the self in all the beings. Having seen from both the standpoint, tvampada, tatpada. You and that. Individual, total. Micro, macro. Everything having seen, now what is there to reveal? There's nothing to reveal. Now revel. But Bhagavan says now, see, just fits into the ideas. Idam sarira. Now he says, what is kshetra kshetra again? He says, idam sariram kaunteya. He kaunte. Idam sariram kshetra miti avidiyate. Fantastic line, please see. Yetadiyo vettitam prahu kshetragyam iti tadvidah. E Arjuna, Edad Sariram, Idam Sariram, Idam Sariram. First thing, language is marvelous. Sanskrit is whoa, language. If we make Sanskrit compulsory in India, India will be a different country. If anybody knows Sanskrit complete language and studies by itself, you will be a different person. Because this language has a theme which you cannot escape. It's all about yourself. And what is that language? Not a miserable self, absolute self. I am the absolute Aksharam, Shivam, Anandam, Sachidanandam. Which language talks about this theme? Tell me. If you translate only in that language, it will be there. Ordinary history of that language you see. Do they speak 
the language of absolute never it is not a fanaticism observe and think for yourself because a concept in a language will exist if the concept exists in a culture if the concept doesn't exist the language will not have words there is no word in sanskrit for computer why because there is no computer brahman atman brahman this word is not consciousness in english english word consciousness is not brahman all pervasive we have to use that word consciousness for it consciousness is a conscious person bas not the consciousness is brahman all pervasive awareness all pervasive okay if we say talk about awareness consciousness that is more like you are conscious of a thing not there is a consciousness awareness all pervasiveness it's not there god god means what god in heaven created the earth not that god is all pervasive so that are you getting that so you to convey this uh, concept to convey this ideas we have to get near equivalent to the word near equivalent to this particular concept so that word you can use like when you say aham listen carefully i and aham are not same i'll give one one sample and that should be enough for you what is the i eh in sanskrit in english you call i right in hindi in uh, french j in uh, tamil what is that gujarati what is that boy in uh, german ik suppose you speak any language in hindi mai in gujarati hu in odia mu all these things any language doesn't come anywhere near sanskrit sanskrit word is what aham listen aham that aham stands for both the individual and the total just see the richness of the language the aham stands for both the individual as well as the total immediately aham means i but the aham also means the absolute how do you say like om asiraskam hakarandam asheshakara sanstitam ajasram ucharantam tam swam atmanam upasmahe asiraskam hakarandam anything that begins with akara all the letters begins with a ends with ha not kshya kshya is kaansha is a conjunct consonant ha a and ha between a and ha between these names the entire universe is named begins with a ha and um waking dream deep sleep it take into account the gross universe subtle universe everything causal universe looks like omkar so you understand aham you understand everything if you understand the word i in english what is the word english i means what does it mean i i means body we have to give that the new dimension what is that aham means i i is same in all the beings that was not it created for understand akshara akshara means what letter in english akshara english word letter what do you call it akshara in sanskrit but akshara in sanskrit is a totally different dimension akshara means letter akshara also means imperishable so akshara abhyasa means the day you begin your study the day you begin your first letter as a baby you start your akshara abhyas you start your first letter the purpose is imperishable akshara abhyas you should revel in the imperishable absolute from the day one the destination is set in which tra tradition it is there tell me which which is not a comparison it's a human tradition that is why don't make it indian tradition this is not indian tradition it's a vedic tradition it is human tradition 
What is this India? India is now shrinking. Ceylon gone, Nepal gone, Bhutan is there, Burma gone, Pakistan gone, what is that one? What is that? Bangladesh is gone. Now what is India now? Shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. It's a human thing. Extend the corridor all over human culture. Knowing about yourself. Just because Newton discovered the law of gravity doesn't make it British reality, British truth. It's a universal truth. Because Madame Curie discovered radium, so it makes it a French uh, metal. Universal. Any truth is universal. More so about yourself. See the language, you will see the richness now. Hey Arjuna, idam sariram kamte ya kshetra miti avidhyade. When you say idam, idam means sariram. Understand? Anything idam is sariram. Sariram means what? Siriyate idi sariram, which is disintegrates. Anything that is idam, idam means subject to objectification. Anything you can say as a this, therefore drushyam, therefore sariram nashyam. Anything that is seen is subject to disintegration. If it is seen, it will be disintegrated. Wow, what language? Idam means sariram. Are you getting it? If you say it is this, that will go. Drushyam. Nashyam. If it is seen, it will not stay forever. Are you getting that? Anything that is, anything that is idam is sariram. Any seen will not stay. Okay. Now let us take into account what is that something which is seen? Jagat drushyam. The whole creation is seen. Sarira body is. Druk, body is seer. Okay? Body is seer. Body is seer. Creation is seen. Okay? So, Jagat is Sariram. Has to disintegrate. No choice. Continuously changing. Now look at your body. Deha, Sariram, Drushyam. Eyes, Druk. The eyes see the whole body. Objectification, body, sariram, disintegrates, childhood. That was a beautiful point yesterday our Brahmachari told, no, a name is given to you. You have given a name. What is your name? Childhood, your name is, listen, childhood, your name is Ram. So the baby's body is Ram. And the same name you have given to the old man also. His name also is Ram. Even though that baby is gone. The baby has gone. Suppose for every stage of the body, you put a name, you know how confusing it will be? Child, Ram. 10 year old, Sham. 25 year old, Dham. You know? <laughs> Something, Rama, Sama, Dama, something like that. Then, Hari. Then what will happen? Rama did this, meaning five-year-old did this. Shama did this, ten-year-old did this. Dama did this, twenty-five-year-old fellow did this. Hari did this, fifty-year-old. You understand the confusion? But is it not true? The body has changed completely. Are you giving many names? The same fellow continues. Who? Body changing. You are the same. You have named it childhood, named it youth, named it things. But you are the same. Body is disintegrating. Idam sariram. The eyes are seen. Now, eyes you see, from the mind you see the eye. Listen carefully. So now eyes are also sariram. Mandatva, andatva, mandatva, patutva, dharma, bright, brilliant, dull, blind. Eyes also disintegrate. 
ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ದೃಶ್ಯಂ ಐ ಐ ಥಾಟ್ ಶಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಂತ ಅದರ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ದ ಲೇಡಿ ಸೇಡ್ ಹಾಂ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಗುಡ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ರಾಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಕ್ ನಾವು ಗೋ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸೀನ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಲೈಕ್ ಎ ರಾಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಎ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ ಬೋತ್ ದಿ ಬಾಯ್ಸ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ನಿಯರ್ ದ ಪಾಂಡ್ ದ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಡ್ ರಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ ಔಟ್ಸೈಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಲಿ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ 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 ಟು ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ನಾನು ದಿ ವಾಟರ್ ದಿ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಟು ಡು ದ ರಾಟ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಔಟ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಸಿಮ್ ಕಮ್ ಲೆಸ್ ಗೋ ದೇ ರಾಟ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋ ಐ ಸೇ ಓಕೆ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಯು ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ನೋ ದಿ ವೇ ಸೊ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಲೂಸ್ ದ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ರನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅವೇ ಓಕೆ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮಿಸ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ಟೈ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಟೈ ಡೌನ್ ಬೋತ್ ಈಚ್ ಅದರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ಗೋ and when the frog sees the water he jumps happy happy home he jumps and when he jumps forget that the tie what that boy the rat is tied so rat also is gone into that now the, now the frog is happily jumping running and everything now the, the rat cannot speak open the mouth and water will go can't breathe dead but the frog forgot the frog is gone 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 dying now frog forgot now dead it comes up floats up now comes garudan the kite flying 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 then he sees ah there's something floating he catches it <laughs> with his feet talon what are the feet and oh, takes it when it then takes it away frog comes with it the frog is also tied to the rat forgot goes up and i instead of writing one it get both food one life one dead eh? both he got like that ahankar and the other thought very friendly identified kitting each other one goes other also goes the thought you express ahankara is finished ahankara goes thought also goes both are dead drowned i want that object go to that object yo why did i go to that object both the die forget that beautiful unconscious behavior means you will die like a rat on the frog unconscious behavior with one thought you die understand but suppose you know conscious behavior you tie down why comfortable go to the safe place once you go there cut it happy rat is moving frog is also moving so you have to connect with your thought why to achieve things in life then disconnect who did it ishwara because without that little connection you can't move understand without the intelligence the ahankar the frog cannot go without the rat the frog cannot go but having on there let not the rat allow the frog to take over got it ahankar can go with the thought nothing wrong but once you reach it got it why happiness with myself this is not only body drushyam eyes seer seer eyes seen thought is seer thought is seen i thought is seer i thought also is seen or not seen ha huh? every thought is seen if it is drushyam it has to be nasyam if it is shariram if it is idam shariram if it is drushyam nasyam so is it necessary to dismiss the dismissed one is it necessary to kill the killed one 
Mula was fighting the battle. <laughs> After fighting the battle, he comes back to report to everybody. Oh, when I was fighting the battle, I, he cut the king's leg and come. You know, he br brought king's leg. And he got to say, see, I brought the king's leg. I killed the king. I brought the leg. Then everybody said, hey, leg is not the trophy. The head is the trophy. He should have got his head. Why did you bring the leg? Somebody had already caught the head. <laughs> <laughs> if already somebody has caught the head, what is your big achievement? <laughs> if somebody already caught the head, what is your achievement? Huh? If thoughts are already killed, what is my achievement of dismissing it? Oof. When body is already disintegrating, what is the idea of my killing it? What a waste. When somebody is on everybody's head, the capital punishment is hanging. Why shoot? Everybody is already miserable. Why should I make them more miserable? You understand. Compassion, natural. Happy man. I don't want to make anybody unhappy. By chance I made you unhappy. Sorry, I withdraw. Please be happy. Why? Because, whew, happy man. You don't have to dismiss your thought. So what is the idea of struggling to dismiss the Swami, so this thought is not going. This thought is not going or you are holding on to it? Ask yourself a question. The thought is not going or you are holding on to it? Think. Just think. When you call attachment, objects get attached or you drag it. If you are attached to the object, does the object get attachment? Object get attached or you get attached? Listen carefully. Even a living thing begins with a child. Does the child get attached or you get attached to the child? The child doesn't know anything. What do you get? You drag, you drag, you drag. Then you say, oh, oh, I am attached. Of course, you are attached. The child doesn't, didn't know. What is cruelty? When the child is attached, suddenly you are tired. Huh? The child doesn't know what to do. Relationship. Why it is destroyed? Because you get attached. And the, what is the selfish consideration? If I am suffering in that relationship, how can the other person enjoy the relationship? Hey, if you are stupid to suffer, that doesn't mean the other fellow is stupid to suffer. Are you getting that point? I am happy with myself. You are happy, you should be happy with yourself. See that. The things which are already dismissed, oof, what a language. He count the idam sariram. You know language? Kshetram. Kshetram. Kshetram is a field. In Sanskrit, in English, it's a field. In Sanskrit, Kshetram means what? Kshetram. 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 Because it is disintegrated, therefore kshetra. What is a kshetra? Kshetra means it will be disintegrated. Sariram, kshetram, all one and the same. Idam sariram, kshetram. It's a field. This body, understand, this body or anything that is subject to objectification. Idam means kshetram. Are you getting that point, please? Idam means kshetram. Body, Kshetra. Creation, Kshetra. Thought, Kshetra. Everything, Kshetra. Panchamahavuta, Ankara Mano Buddhi, Vinna Prakriti Nastada, Ashta Prakriti, five elements, space, air, fire, water, earth, all over. Are you getting that? Do not think in terms of little, little, little thing now. Total space. Expand your mind. Total space. Total air. Don't stuck. Don't get stuck on the head size. Mind means head size. Huh? 
That's where you get a headache. You know, you know head, head size, this much. Hey! Oh! You understand? This is my hand, huh? this is my hand. Uh, uh, now if I put this one, what will happen? Can I put this one? Anything? You know? Oh, you're full. Congested, too full. Now think in terms of the whole house and the hand. Nothing in the hand. Why? There's so much of empty space. Are you getting that? Why do you feel your head is loaded? Because your size is head size. How many thoughts you can have? How many thoughts you can give? <laughs> How many thoughts you can give? Can't handle one thought? Headache. <laughs> you understand? You may have thousands of thoughts, but the one thought which you cannot handle is headache. And why that thought you cannot handle? Because you don't know how to handle yourself, the I. When I is not known, a thought becomes a problem for the I. Thought is a problem or is a problem for somebody? Come on. Can there be anything in life which is a problem for itself, by itself? Money, is it a problem by itself? Weather, is it a problem by itself? Body, is it a problem by itself? Thought, a problem by itself? No. Problem to somebody. Who is that somebody? I. If you are not there, what is your problem? If you are there, your will come. If you are not there, what is your? <laughs> if you are a problem, yours is a problem. If you are not there, what is your? You are not there, no. So what is your? Because when you are not there, it's all his Ishwara, Ishwara's. It's all his. Let him handle it. Happily given up. In fact, giving up is easy, you know, if you understand it. Like a man in uh, Urisha, they say he was, they say there are some people like, you know, foolish, they call them, but don't, don't name that. Anyway, a man is traveling in a train. And he was carrying a brinjal basket because his carriage from his village to the town was selling. He was carrying a train. So he, but he is putting the brinjal basket on his head and uh, sitting. <laughs> then somebody says, what is this? Why are you carrying your brinjal basket? He says, no, no, train is already carrying so much load. If I put it down, no, how much load it will be on the train? <laughs> Why are you laughing? The fellow is an idiot, right? Because whether he is living there or on his head, Train is carrying, no? So why should you carry it on your head? Life situations are like that. You think you are carrying it, therefore. Because I don't want to load God, you know. Yeah, true. How sympathetic. It's not sympathetic, pathetic. <laughs> it's totally pathetic. He is going to load, why are you carrying? You do your part. Therefore, don't sit down and say, he is carrying. <laughs> Why are you not writing? He will write. Why are you not reading the book? He will read. God will read. Why are you not eating? Ah, no, 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 I'm going to eat. <laughs> Why don't you say he will eat? Eating time, of course, I will eat, no? If I will eat, then I will write. I will read. I will do everything. Are you getting that? That I. Functional I. Kshetram. You understand? Kshetram idhya vidhiyade. And see the revelation. So what, are the, so what is the kshetra? Idam. Anything subject to objectification is kshetra. Okay? The whole creation, including your body, your sansargan, all your memories, your thoughts, I thought. If this is kshetra, yetad yo vettitam prahu kshetra gyamiti tadvidah. Yetad yo vetti. Whichever one knows all this kshetra, 
Who knows? Self awareness. Kshetragyam iti tadviduhu. Those who know the truth, they say, if you want to give that one a name, Kshetragyam. Kshetram janati. Janati iti gyaha. Kshetram janati iti kshetragyaha. One who knows the kshetra. Kshetras are different. Kshetragya is one. In you, you have so many fields. Thought. I thought. Memories. Senses. Body. Perception. Perceptible universe. All kshetra. Kshetragya is one self. And now connect it up. Kshetragyam maam chapi maam vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharata he bharata. Krishna says, he Arjuna. Sarva kshetreshu in all the fields, not only your body, but the entire physical universe in all the bodies, wherever there is a kshetragyam, maam iti vidhi, he Arjuna, know that to be myself. Jiva Ishwara Varandise. What a revelation. What a revelry. Which he had already told, no? Apareyam mano buddhi bhoomira panalo vayu khammano buddhi revache ahankariti yamme vinna prakutita stada apareyam five elements mano buddhi ahankar totality apara prakuti Atastu anyam, whatever is there, me para prakuti, absolute. Jiva bhutam, in every jiva, individual and there, same thing. The kshetra and kshetra gya. Anything that is idam, that is sariram, that is kshetram. Repeat again and again and again and let it sink into yourself. What are you doing? Conditioning you? Are revealing you. Are you getting that? Only revealing. Con what is conditioning? Conditioning is giving, making the person believe in something which he is not. Condition I am the body is conditioning. Body is body, I am I is releasing, not conditioning. That is why Vedanta is not a conditioning. Do you understand? What I am not, if you make me believe, it's a conditioning. If you let me know who I am, is it conditioning or a religion? <laughs> Somebody asked the question, what was this, uh, uh, what is the political belief of, uh, what is that boys? Uh, Adam and Eve. What was their political belief? Uh, People are asking, everybody don't know what to do. A hard politics, there are only two fellows. There is no kingdom, no government, no nothing. So what political belief? Story goes, they say, I don't know, it's attributed to Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was a, you know, sort of an American president. He said, those days, there is cold war between America and Russia, no? So he said, they must be communists. <laughs> then he said, why do you say they must be communists? It's because they were living in a forest, no food, no shelter, no dress, nothing, only apple to share, but they thought they were in paradise. <laughs> that is why they are communist. In a communist country, there is no food, nothing, but you must say you are in paradise, right? That is conditioning. To believe in something which you are not. That is condition. Conditioning is not, I am the truth. Conditioning is, I am the body. <laughs> I am the thought. I am rich. And that becomes conditioning. So, idam sariram, kshetram. Etat yoveti, one who knows this. The I thought, that is where your contemplation. I thought knows everything. Who knows the I thought? I know the I. 
I know the eye, that I know the eye. Eh? Don't get into that spiral. Anubhavaji knows presence or that. And that, Kshetragyam Sarvakshetresu Ahameva Bhagavan says. Sarvakshetresu Kshetragyam Maab Imam Vidhi Maam Kshetragyam Vidhi Arjuna No Me Adi Kshetragya in all the Kshetras, all the fields. And all the Kshetras are also belong to whom? Ishwara. He is Kshetragya in all the fields and all fields are his field. Ishwara alone is what he is taking. So, you give your kshetra to the total kshetra. That's why in Puri Jagannath Temple, what is it? Shri kshetra, the ultimate kshetra in which everything is there. And where is Jagannath? Jagannath means what? Jagataha Natha, the Lord of the universe, not in one place, in and through everything. So when Shankara goes there, what he writes? Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patagami Bhavatu. May Bhavatu, let it happen to me. May, he, may I see him clear. Meaning, it's all in yourself. So all over, Kshetra, Kshetra, Sarva Kshetra, Subharata. So which Kshetra is touchable? Which one is untouchable? If tradition like this, can he ever support untouchability? <laughs> Understand. Wow. Things are revel. These are the two. Just starting afternoon, we'll see. Whoosh, pass through that. Okay? We'll see. You know, kshetra, kshetra. You know, understand. It's not. Please pick these ideas. Whole day you chant these two verses. Easy to remember. Idam sariram gaunte yakshetram. Idam sariram, not idam. Anything that is idam, sariram. So body also is sharira, thought also is sharira, because siriyate disintegrates, kshetra, kshetranath, kshetra, dies away. One who knows this, thought also disintegrating. And that, God in all the beings, kshetra gya, he alone is a kshetra in all the beings, Ishwara. All the beings means where? This way, five billion beings. Billions of stars, planets, galaxies, kshetra, everything in and through. When you see this, your thoughts are so insignificant, they don't even exist. Only become samples. Okay? Close your eyes. Mahadeva, just see that clearly. This perception, in this vision, call it whatever you like. What is Papa Punya? Sukha Dukkha, right, wrong, good, bad, auspicious, inauspicious. All these divisions completely disappear. Everything divine. Thank you.